preview of the video that I just made. It's just going to be fin to finish it out. And basically, I was going to that spiritual retreat looking to find God. But I ended up having, you know, just more cultic way by you know, just cultic individual. Like, you hit that hot button. You get, they get you alone. They're real nice and normal inside their church setting. They act like they're normal. But once they've all, all the men have gone aside into the wilderness to a church retreat, then that, all of a sudden, they're a completely different animal. Like, you didn't expect that different personality to come out. But it did. And basically, just to corner you and attack you and just to interrogate you. And they like to do interrogations. They do that a lot. And just this real nasty sort of way. And, you know, and so I spoke up for women's rights. And I spoke up against this divisiveness and this nasty interpersonal behavior. And I said, hey, this is a holy time. You're supposed to be seeking God together here. So keep the peace so that the Holy Spirit can come down here. And here are the women's rights. And here's the basis of the Bible of everything I'm saying. And that the Holy Spirit is still active and alive. And here's the book of the Word, Word of God where it says... God gives prophecy and speaking in tongues and miracles and discernment and wisdom by the Holy Spirit, not by human intellect. And that's what they believe in. They believe in human intellect, not the Holy Spirit. And on old men, not in God. But I, I didn't go that far to say that, but I just gave them the scripture. I gave them the scripture. Wow. Someone named Jeanette just followed me on Instagram. I just talked about someone named Jeanette. That's weird. Okay, but... So you see what I'm saying? And, and I talked to them. I said, here's women. Women have, women have all the rights of men. Women have rights. Here, they have all the rights. Women have all the rights and men have all the rights. Both men and women have all the rights. And women don't need to cover their heads or do anything with their hair. They can do whatever the hell they want with their hair, in my opinion. And here's where it says that in the Bible. And the Bible does say that. The Bible does freaking say that. The Bible does say that. The Bible does freaking say that. And... I didn't say freaking on the, while I was up there, but I did say the same idea. And, you know, and I got, and so after that, they were, you could tell the church, they didn't take, make me come down, but the church elders were fuming, angry with a scowl on their face. Like, you know, you could see them. <sighs> All the kids, after that, they loved me. Well, the men hated me. Like the air goes out of the room. They hate you. They wish you were dead. They wish you didn't exist. They just loathe you. You can tell. And that's not... So for the whole rest of the, the two-day retreat, they just loathe you. Like the air just goes out of the room. They hate you. They wish you didn't exist. You know, just hatred exuding. How is that an image of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit is living inside these elders? It's not. And don't ever even dare to say, oh, this is not a true representation of the Plymouth Brethren Church. This is a mild example. These are inclusive brethren. The worst ones are the exclusive brethren, and I didn't, I've never encountered them. But these are the mild. This is 100% definitely yes. This is 100% the freaking doctrine of the Plymouth Brethren group. It is 100%. Don't even try to kid yourself. You're, you're deceiving yourself. You're deluded. You are self-deceived. You are deceiving yourself. You are lying to yourself to deceive and delude yourself so that you will keep on going with this pattern because it's more convenient for you so that your family does not exclude you because they will exclude you and they will loathe you and they'll hate you. They'll pretend you didn't exist and they wish you were never born if you, if you cross them spiritually. And you will cross them spiritually because you can't possibly be perfect. So what you need to do is you need to leave this damn church because it's not God's church. It's a church of Satan. It's a synagogue of Satan. It's a synagogue of Satan. It's not the church of God. Okay, but... So what they did, this one of their elders, a Mr. Anderson, he took, you know, he started... He, he, you know, he, he took a chair aside and sat in it backwards across from me once everyone was started to leave the room. And I just stayed there because I knew I was going to get yelled at. And I'm not afraid of him. God told me, the Holy Spirit told me in words, verbal, physical words, do not be afraid of them. Do not fear them. And so he just came and started yelling, screaming, you know, just hatred, hateful face. Just a hateful, screaming face. And just yelling, screaming, spit was just, he was red in the face. You know, he's a white, he's really white. Let me say this. It's a really white church. There's no black people in the church. Let's say that, okay? 
But I'm just going to tell you, that's, what it, that's the way it is. It's real racially one type. And um, he was just red in the face like a beet. Red like a turnip. And he was just screaming. Spit was just... He's a big fat guy, by the way. Really big and fat. With big sausage fingers, you know. He just spit was flying in his face. His spit was just coming out and hitting me in the face. He was... He was yelling and screaming, and the spit was just hitting me in the face. His drops of spit. And he knew. He knew, and he didn't care. He was doing it on purpose. He saw me flinching and wiping it away. He kept doing it because he was mad at me because he thought that I deserved it. His name is Mr. Anderson. He's the, one of the, he's almost an elder, but not quite <laughs> at that church. But he's the, he's, the, he's the muscle. He's the enforcer. He's the bully that the elders ask to go bully people that they don't like. But, uh, so he's the, he's the hot button. He's a sensitive hot button. But anyways, he started poking me in the chest. He got so mad, he started poking me in the chest hard. Not like, not like, oh, just tap, tap, tap. No, like he's trying to give you a bruise. I got a bruise from it. And I've just been socially intimidated to not talk about it, to not report it, to not anything, because they're, they put the fear in you. They make you be afraid for yourself afraid for your life, afraid for your social standing, afraid for, they'll, you know, they'll ruin your friend's group, they'll ruin your sister's friend's group, they'll ruin your social fans group, they'll, bo they'll bully you, they'll all unfriend you on Facebook, they'll just hate you. And so, you know, so I got, just by speaking the truth from the Bible, just reading some Bible verses and saying, hey, cool it off, that made them so, him so angry, one of the church elders, that he was, you know, physically attacking me. He was physically poking me in the chest hard. Like, give you a bruise hard. And spitting in my face. And there's only one... I only found one sane man in the whole group. And I just hung out with him for the rest of the time. And he himself had left. He used to be an elder, but he left. He couldn't... He didn't, he didn't want to do it anymore. And he was just more interested in talking about how wonderful the Pilgrim's Progress book in talk, he was more interested in talking about how wonderful the book Pilgrim's Progress is. And he just talked to me about that. We just talked about that for hours. And the young people loved me, but the old people, you could tell just the hatred on their face. Like they wish you didn't exist. So, I mean, that's my story. And, yeah. So, thanks for listening. And notice I do not give any last names. I do not give any times, dates, locations, and places. I could if I wanted to. I considered reporting it to the police, but I'm going to not do it because I'm going to have grace on these people. But if they keep causing me trouble, maybe I'll have to. I'll have to report it to the police, and I have it all ready up ready, but I'm, I'm just not going to do it because I believe in God. So, but I'm giving you this story in generalized ideas, not like and like, I'm, I'm not giving you the names, okay? But I'm telling you, this is the story. This is my personal real-life experience. This is part two, and thanks for listening. How do I turn this off?